This is a, I'll correct my English, an historic occasion. The time has come to end all discrimination in whatever form. For some of us, the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1988 represents the next step in the American Civil Rights Movement. This legislation grants full rights to Americans with disabilities and moves our great nation from a respectable position of official compassion for those with impairments to a more laudable position of empowering disabled Americans. People with disabilities like racial and ethnic minorities, women, are entitled to obtain a job, enter a restaurant or hotel, ride a bus, listen to and watch the TV, use the telephone, and use public services free from invidious discrimination and free from policies that exclude them solely on the basis of their disability. Every American must be guaranteed genuine opportunities to live their lives to the maximum of their potential. The Americans with Disabilities Act prohibits discrimination against persons with disabilities in areas of employment, public accommodations, transportation, communications, and public services. Legislation will become the law of the land during the 101st Congress. However, the road to enactment will be filled with potholes and roadblocks. But if we stick together as a community and we work with the groups representing employers in the hotel, restaurant, communications, and transportation industries, I believe we can succeed. Um, I think uh, as you listen to the, those who have spoken today, you uh, realize that uh, there probably hasn't been a family in the country that hasn't been touched by some form of physical or mental challenge. Uh, you've heard uh, some statements uh, today, very moving statements of members of the family. That's been true in the, uh, the Kennedy family as well. The sister who's retarded, the son, my own son, who's lost um, a limb to, uh, to cancer. And I bet if you uh, go across this country, there really isn't a member of a family or an extended family that hasn't been touched. And so it is time that our government recognize our abilities and give us the dignity to do what we can do. As a young man, I developed seizures, later diagnosed as epilepsy. For many years, for five years, as I had my seizures on a regular basis, I did not know what they were. I went to every doctor that you could think of. I also went to three witch doctors because I was supposedly possessed by the devil. My Republican colleagues think I am, <laughs> but others believed I was. And as I went to college, I was an achiever. I got outstanding grades in high school and outstanding grades in college, student body president in high school and student body president in college. I was outstanding senior in college. I was sought after by different businesses and groups to be involved with their activities and be employed by them. And I had decided that I wanted to be an attorney. In my senior year, I changed my mind. I decided I wanted to become a Catholic priest. And as I graduated with honors, I then did, had a physical exam the seminary. The physical exam pointed out that these seizures that I'd been having for five years meant that I had epilepsy. I always remember very well what happened and that I walked to the doctor's office from my car, sat in the doctor's office, was told about my epilepsy, walked back to my car, got back in my car and drove back to my fraternity house and I was the same exact person. But only in my own mind because the I marked it. So I 
I was not going to lie. And I couldn't get a job. My parents refused to accept my epilepsy. I became suicidal and drunk by noon. And the only reason is because I hadn't changed as a person. The only reason is is that the world around me had changed. And the light had been turned off, the light of opportunity, the light of hope. And not until a priest friend of mine turned me over to a man of hope by the name of Bob Hope did the light get lit again. Serving in the capacity that I serve because some people believed. Not because my government protected me, not because my government protected my basic civil rights. So I'm a major advocate of this bill because I want to make sure that other young people, as they're looking for hope, as they believe that the system should work for them, have that hope, have that opportunity. What happened at Gallaudet University was not only an inspiration, I'm sure, to the hearing impaired. What happened at Gallaudet University was an inspiration to all of us with disabilities. And that if we ourselves believe in ourselves and are willing to stand up, we can make a difference. That's what this bill is all about. 36 million Americans deciding it's time for us to stand up for ourselves to make a difference. To say that we want our basic civil rights also. We deserve it and give us an opportunity to do what we can do. Don't keep telling us what we can't do. I thank my colleagues.